What up, party people? I am Erica. Today we're talking 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After, but not really. Uh, season eight, episode nine, Lovely Duckling. We're talking Ed and Liz. We're going to talk about Kobe and Emily getting their wedding together. We're going to talk about Jasmine and Gino, uh, Sophie and Rob, all of the things, you guys. We're going to get into it right now. So let's get into it. I want a happy ending. I'm tired of pretending. Well, let them get the best of me. All right, you guys, what up? Welcome to my channel. We're, this is going to be a quick video. I'm still trying to get up to speed. Things have been crazy. So let's just make it quick since, you know, we all know what happened. Um, I want to get this out before another Sunday passes. So our first couple, let's do... Big Ed and Liz. So as we know, Big Ed and uh, Liz got into a big argument. He called off the wedding and like didn't really tell her. And basically she heard it from one of his friends. So now finally they are able to meet in person. Let me show that photo right here. Okay, so this... <laughs> They meet up at this luncheon and Big Ed is basically telling her, oh, I want to be single. He's giving the, it's not you, it's me. Um, you know, you're young and beautiful and all of these things. And when I tell you, Liz, uh, she breaks down. She starts crying. She doesn't want to be alone. Girl, um... I don't know, Liz, you go to therapy, do whatever you can, because after all of these breakups, this is what you need to do with him. You need to do this right here, girl. Run. I mean, I'm not clear why Liz would get with him after she saw how he did Rose back in the day. I don't even understand why... TLC still has Ed on here. Originally, they were one of my couples that I just did not give a fuck about. But um, luckily, excuse me, luckily they have broken up. So woohoo, Liz, be happy, girl. Don't worry, be happy, Chica, Chica, because uh, you need to be free. You need to be free of Ed. And uh, this is how you need to be now that Ed is gone. Yes, girl. Ain't no stopping you, girl. Because Ed is out of there. So woohoo. All right. Let's move on to our next couple. The next people we will do is. The next couple will be Rob and Sophie. Let's make this quick. Shout out to St Sophie and her. Um, move my camera a little bit so I can get over here. Shout out to Sophie and her ugly wig. That's a tribute. <laughs> this is my tribute to Sophie because Nicole wasn't in this episode. So are we going to be blonde whenever there's you know, Sophie and uh, please bring back Angela, those two. So Sophie, Sophie and Rob, here they go. Sophie and Rob, they go to therapy. Let me hide it so we can see the photo a little bit better. Let's see, is this one better? Mm, I don't know. All right, that's Sophie and Rob at therapy. Sophie and Rob go to therapy, and that's where we learn that Rob is obsessed with pornos, with bodybuilder women. Um, and so because she's Sophie's not shaped like a bodybuilder, um, that's why they haven't had sex in like months and months and months. Um, it's not because she's bisexual and attracted to women uh yeah 
So pretty much the therapist tells us the same thing that the guy in the flea market did. They need to work on their communication. Again, this is definitely, uh, how shall I put it? This is definitely one of those couples where I can say right here, I don't give a fuck. Um, but that's pretty much all that happened to them. They sort of, I don't know if they even really got anywhere in therapy. She doesn't want to bring up the fact that he has a mystery whole phone um, until she can actually find a phone and her goofy ass still hasn't found that phone yet. So yeah, that's pretty much all that happened with Rob and Sophie. So let's move on to our next couple. Let's talk... The next one we're going to do is Ashley and Manuel. All right, let's get into it. So Ashley and Manuel, um, last we left with them, they were, let me get this better. Okay, so the last time we left off with them, they, uh, she got mad because he went to breakfast with his friend Jonathan and didn't want to invite her and because she was, you know, he just, Every every episode, he's like, I need my space. You're smothering me. I want to get my visa and yet still be free of you. That's basically what he says every single episode. And this one is no different. So his friend, Jonathan. So basically, he storms out of the hotel room with Ashley. And he asks her for the credit card. And she pretends like she doesn't hear him. And so he has to leave with no money. So he calls his boy and like, let's meet up for a beer. But you got to pay because this hoe didn't give me no money. So they meet up. And Jonathan, he calls himself trying to be a peacemaker. So he invites Ashley so he can hear her slides and see her and Manuel's side. So she comes and she tries to explain, you know, how he could have texted me, he could have called me. And here's the thing with these two, I think, is that neither person will, uh, here we go. No, that's not them. Sorry. Neither, neither one of them will back down, right? So, you know, they won't back down. They won't say they're sorry. She, you know, she later says, you know, she's like, uh, you know, he brings her there. Manuel is there. Um, you know, he's trying to ex explain to her, okay, he didn't say anything because he thought you were asleep. He didn't want to bother your rest. He didn't want to do anything wrong. And so that is why he didn't, you know, call you or text you or whatever. And well, it's just like, plus you would have been like, oh, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. And easily to me, at least let her know where you are and just say, okay, you know, I'll bring you something back. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but either way, she's totally dramatic. She doesn't want to take any sort of accountability and neither does he. And um, Jonathan, which I totally agree with, Jonathan basically comes to the conclusion that they are both at fault. And so that is kind of where he leaves it. And um, he says they're both, sorry, guys, this camera keeps moving. They're both at fault and they both need to apologize, which is the only way we're really going to move forward. But, you know, in this episode, they do not. So moving right along, let's talk Alexi and Lauren. I love them. They're so cute. Lauren is going in for her surgery and Alexi is just totally totally worried he's there all day sort of worrying because I think her surgery is somewhere between five to eight hours he is worried he is nervous he is all of the things and he's there by her side and so then after the surgery she comes out she's totally wrapped up she can't walk they wheel her out to the car and she's like her eyes are bugged out. She's high. She's in recovery. And he is really scared about how he's going to manage things. And this really, this is kind of a touching thing because he's really scared dealing with this. But then, um, 
you know, for those of us who have considered surgery and so many people have gone in for cosmetic surgery and things didn't turn out well, you know, so far she still looks beautiful. So far, you know, he's just worried about her health and being a supportive husband. So shout out to Alexi and Lauren. I love them. All right, let's move on to our next couple. Oh, goodness. Another couple that I can say is so few couples on this season that I actually even care about. So Patrick and Thais, let's make this quick because, uh, again, they're another I don't give a fuck couple these two right here. Okay. So we're coming back after her birthday. They went to the park with the dad. The dad wanted him to apologize and he pretty much refused. And he's pretty much trying to stand on business talking about we married with a baby now. Why should I still have to ask for your hand? And she's kind of like, why are you making it such a big deal? Just go in, ask. And he's like, well, he won't. I want his respect. I'm not going to get his blessing now. So I want him to respect me by acting like an asshole. Make it make sense. If any of you all understand this, I didn't really get it. Um, you know, I didn't really understand where he was coming from. But then uh, basically he gets a text message. Let me hide this overlay so we can see the photo. Uh, let's see. Make it a little bit bigger. He gets a text message from from John um from his brother John, right? Is that his name? The crazy brother. Anyway, the brother just landed, so he's gonna go meet up with his brother, and she has to go in with the dog and the baby. And of course, she's mad because she doesn't see why uh she ain't getting no noogie on her birthday. Why are you trying to spend my birthday with your brother? That's what she don't understand. Um, she don't get it. Why are you trying to spend the, spend the evening with him? And I, you already know, I think he's trifling and you already acted a fool with my daddy. So you need to be in here. We need to be doing the makeup sex. And instead you going to kick it. You and your limp leg are going to kick it with your brother. Pretty much that's all that happened with them. Again, not the most interesting couple. Let's move on to uh, let's move on to our favorites or one of our favorites. Let's check out Kobe and Emily. So Kobe and Emily, um, as we recall, they just had a falling out with Kobe's friends. So now Emily is trying to go all in on the family. She goes to the market. They buy like cow skin. She's going to fix a traditional Cameroonian dish for his family. His sister is coming over that comes over to kind of teach her how to cook. And they're because they're both like, we don't know how Kobe's been eating because <laughs> it had to be a hard life. And, um, you know, so they're getting ready for that. And, you know, Emily's like, well, what if I wanted to make mashed potatoes? Now, the one thing I will say with Emily's family that I find interesting, or I don't know if I want to say interest, not interesting, but like irritating is um, like, for example, they bring in cow skin, right? And they're like, oh, it smells so whatever. Like they just, I don't know. I mean, I guess, are they in? I'm not sure. I forgot where they are. Are they in Iowa or something? They just act like they've never been exposed to anybody's culture at all. And, you know, he's been in their house for like two years. You know what I'm saying? You were on a flight for like a million hours. Just Google some of this. So they're always so shocked about all the culture. The, You know, it's, it's shocking. But I know they're trying. And so, you know, they want to be supportive of their daughter and the family. And honestly, I mean, we cannot knock them because they are supporting all a whole full four member family. Okay. In their retirement years. So I'm not going to totally knock them, but I wish, um, you know, I wish they would try a little bit harder uh, to just 
kind of be more aware about things, but they do try. So I'm not, I'm not a total hater, you guys. So don't eat me up in the comments. Um, but yeah, so we find out about this process called, I think it's the knock door or whatever, where um, Kobe's family, they're going to come and, um, you know, they have to find out, you know, they have to pay a dowry and they have to bring, you know, basically um, Emily's father has come up with the list of things that he wants um, from Kobe's family. And he comes up with things like a goat and an umbrella because, you know, we need an umbrella and all these other things. And then at the very end, they're supposed to come up with a money amount, like whatever. And so Kobe's, I mean, Emily's father is okay with it, which I like the fact that he stood his ground because Emily's mother was like, no, I feel like I'm selling my daughter and I don't want to go against my morals or whatever, whatever. And it's like, didn't you all talk about this before you got here? Like, why is it two days before the wedding and you can't just put down, okay, give us $50. Like, why is it such a thing? So she, I'm not sure if this production or if this is really her trying to, you know, hold on to her morals, but it's not like you're selling your daughter. It's in essence, just showing respect to their culture. So, you know, we kind of leave where it's up in the air because she doesn't want to give in. And it's like, well, if, which is another thing, if the father agrees to it, can't he just do it? Cause He's the father. So I think he could just put down whatever money amount he won't and she can just complain. But, you know, we'll see how that goes. But I did like the scenes with them because I like the fact Emily is kind of like, OK, we need to uh, really you know, basically Emily's like, look, his friends don't like me. So his family, we got to go all in on the family. So I don't care what you tell them, you, you know, tell them you'll take a dollar, but we need to put something on that list right now because his friends can't stand my ass. So I need to impress this family big time. So I think hopefully she persuades her mother and gets her mother back on board. And then, uh, let's see. Okay, the last couple of the evening are Jasmine and Gino. You know, I'm 50-50 on them. But this episode, we see Jasmine. She goes to her, um, it's the workshop for the pageant. And everyone is so supportive from the teacher to the other pageant members. Gino is the only guy sitting in there looking like a goofy. But outside of that, it's a very cute scene. Everyone tells her how beautiful she is. And she gets to, you know, practice her, her, you know, her walk and waving to the people, to the people, to the people. And so then um, later on, as uh, that evening. So she has so much fun and she's so excited and she feels like she wants to do a pageant. But obviously they don't live in Miami. So that's a thing. And then, um, you know, so that evening they have friend, they have dinner with her friend and she makes Jasmine margaritas, which I want to know what's in them because I want to make a margarita tonight. But she makes Jasmine margaritas and, you know, she's telling her friend like, oh, I had so much fun. I really want to do more with the pageants, which pageant is kind of like golf. That's not no poor man's sport. And we all know Gino ain't got no money or he said he ain't got no money or he don't want to spend that money, whatever the case may be. So to want to take it beyond the workshop is interesting because you need to be saving up for getting your kids over here. But OK. We want to support you and getting your confidence back because, you know, and what was so interesting is she talks a lot about her alopecia, which I appreciate. And then it's like, I'm like, girl, we, we, we remember when you used to have Gina out here buying your human uh, clip-ins. So like the other women in the pageant were like, that's what we do. We wear clip-ins and wigs just like you used to do, Jasmine. But I get it because, you know, as we see here with Sophie, a bad wig can really do you wrong. So we totally support you, Jasmine. And she starts to feel confident. So she makes her Jasmine margaritas. She gives them to her friend and Gino. And she's just like, and they both are kind of trying to 
get, you know, to consider allowing her to actually be part of the pageants and do pageants and stuff. And Gina was like, well, I think it's great. I totally support you. But how is this going to work with you getting pregnant? And that's when Jasmine finally decides to tell him the truth, 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 that she does not really want to get pregnant right now. She's not ready for a baby right now. And, you know, she's not sure if she's going to ever be ready. And Gino gets mad and storms off. Um, if you're still here, you guys, like, comment, and subscribe. But yeah, Gino gets gets mad and storms off and uh you know he is upset because basically here you can't handle the truth yeah gino can't handle the truth which is uh jasmine wants to be over here let me put them back up where are we at gino and jasmine yeah Jasmine wants to be over here with the kids she already got, dude. She don't want no more babies. She struggled to have the two that she has. She's not ready. She's already, I think she's turned 37 this birthday. So it's like, if she ain't trying to get pregnant today and he's like 51. So he's like, look, you know, I need, I need kids yesterday. And, um, you know, and she basically finally breaks down and tells him it's a no go. It's a no go on the babies. And you know, storms off, and that's kind of where we end it with him. All right, you guys, if you're still here, subscribe. We're trying to get up to 500 subscribers so I can do some more live streams with you guys. But basically, that's it for this episode. Um, and if you're still here, comment, let me know what you think. To me, honestly, I would give this episode like a six. It wasn't actually that interesting to me, but let me know. Maybe I missed something. Was there something fun and interesting that I didn't catch? All right, you guys, let me know what you think. Like, comment, and subscribe, as I said. And overall, as I always say, be true, be you, be great. Ciao for now, folks, and I will see you in the next video. Doodles. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. No.